We're good. Perfect. Hello and welcome to Fresno City Toastmasters. I am the president of our club, Farron Jacobson. We have one guest today, so welcome to Krista. And I think, yeah, that's the only guest we have and all of our other members looking great. Our mission statement, we always like to start off our club, uh, our meetings with our mission statement. It says, we provide a supportive and positive learning experience in which members are empowered to develop communication and leadership skills resulting in greater self-confidence and personal growth. So keep that in mind that we maintain a positive atmosphere here in our club as we progress through our meeting. Just a couple of housekeeping rules for our Zoom meetings. We do like to use jazz hands as our applause and please keep yourself muted unless you're called upon or during table topics. And if you need to get up and move about your space, please turn your video off so it's not a distraction to anyone else. I think that's about it. And then our business announcements. We had a board meeting yesterday. We did discuss meeting in person. We are going to table that until June because for me and maybe some other people, kids are still in school, but it looks like they're gonna be going back to school and that'll free up some schedules. We're also looking into restaurants that have banquet rooms available for our meetings. So that maybe we can try like once a month meeting for lunch. And Bitwise is not gonna open back up anytime soon. It looks like we're going to try to find a meeting space. So for now, we are gonna table that until June when more things start to open up. At least we hope so, it looks like it. Anything else to add board on that note? No, nothing on that. What about our two gals that competed uh, this week, last weekend. That is the next item on the new business. We, Chanel and I, is Chanel here? Chanel's not here. Chanel and I participated in the area uh, speech contests, international, and I was in the humorous contest. Chanel won second place and I won first, which means I move on to division this Saturday. It's from nine to noon. Thank you guys. Um, yeah, it's, Saturday from nine to noon. I'll send out the link if anyone wants to observe and watch. I don't think they need volunteers at this point for judges or timers or anything, but I will send out emails if they do. And yeah, so I think that's about it. Good, anything else that I'm missing board? <laughs> I think we're good. All righty. Then I will pass the baton over to the Toastmaster of the day, Danny Mason. Hi everyone, good morning, good afternoon. I just finished reading a fantastic book called Centered. And the little byline says, trading your plans for a life that matters. Sarah, you would like this book. For those of us that are uh, following our faith, this is a great book in that regard. It's also inspirational for everyone else, no matter where you land in that regard. It's about uh, uh, Jason Brown, who was a center for several pro NFL teams, walking away from his career of fortune and fame to go do what was a calling on his life with his family and start a farm, start growing food and feeding the poor. And it's a fantastic story the gist of which in the end is we have to get over ourselves, get over the things that we think are important and take the perspective of, well, it's not that we have to, let's just say that this is what he did. He took the perspective that if he could just do some small thing that contributed to a larger plan, then he was playing his role in it which I think is a very good perspective to have. It kind of keeps things in perspective. And it's really easy to take ourselves way too seriously. Like if I say ah or um, is that gonna ruin my day today? Well, in the overall big picture of the world it's pretty insignificant. So I'm just working on doing what's right, doing the, the next best thing, which is participating, having fun, laughing, and we all get to 
make mistakes in here, laugh, have a good time, and go on with our life knowing we're getting better. With that, I'm going to introduce our general evaluator, who is Joey Myers. Thank you, Denny. Without a purpose, people perish. Got to have a purpose. So I'm the general evaluator of the day. I'm going to introduce my team of evaluators. And first on our list is our grammarian of the day, who is going to introduce our word of the day, and that's Heather Davis. Thank you, Joey. Hi, everybody. So I try to go on theme with the whole get over it, but you know, every time I kept typing that in, I kept getting like a 2001 movie with Kristen Dunst in it and just, it wasn't working. So I found this word that I thought would be a good alternative. Sorry, my neighbor's dogs are barking. Um, it's wistful. So wistful is an adjective. Uh, it, the first meaning is full of yearning or desire tinged with melancholy, also inspiring such as yearning or wistful memoir. Uh, musingly sad, pensive, a wistful glance. Uh, these words kind of got me thinking about like getting over it and kind of the process. Sometimes these feelings that you feel when you do have to get over things. Uh, so I encourage you, if you can, say uh, the word of the day during the meeting. Uh, I'll keep track, and at the end of the meeting, I'll let uh, you all know who was able to say the word of the day. So that is my word for the day, and I'll give it back to Joey. Thank you, Heather. And our <clears throat> next on our evaluation leadership team, this person can give us a wistful feeling after she's done, but if you heed Denny's message, then it won't, and that is Taylor Frederick. Hi guys, I'm Taylor. I'm your awe counter for the day and I'll be counting your crutch words. So like tisk, um, things like that. So don't feel bad if you use them. <laughs> and I'll report back at the end. Thank you, Taylor. And then I saw Farron, looks like she's got a four-legged friend there sitting on her lap. And she is going to be our timer of the day. And I saw her practicing with the colors behind her. So, Baron? Yes, thank you. He was whining, so I wanted to keep him quiet. That's why he's in my lap. But I don't know if that's more of a distraction. <laughs> this is my newest client. Today, I will be timing the speeches. We have Ty giving his uh, icebreaker speech, four to six minutes. At four minutes, you will get green. Hopefully this works, yes. At five minutes, you get yellow. Six minutes you get red which means wrap it up and then Winnie will be giving a five to seven minute speech so at five minutes green scream yellow at six and red at seven I will also time the evaluations they are to be two to three minutes and our table topics are one to two minutes that's all thank you Farron very nice and I will also be doing our video videography or our Zoom master, which is just trying to make sure that we have a, you got Farron in the view there. So then we switch back to here. So we wanna make sure that whoever's speaking that they have that main video pane uh, pinned. And that also helps if you pin your video or I'll pin your video as you're speaking, if you're the, the speaker, one of the speakers. So I'll be doing that. And with that, I will hand it back over to Denny Mason, our Toastmaster to introduce our speakers. Thank you, Joey. So I'm going to introduce Ty Martinez. I know you can't see me, but I'm reading in the chat. So our second speaker this afternoon is speaking from Pathways Level 2, Project 1, Understanding Your Communication Style. The goal of this speech is to stand in front of an audience and deliver a five to seven minute speech. He's going to discuss obstacles to communicating in English and Oh, and how she plans to become a more effective communicator in English. The title of the speech is, As a Second Language Learner, How Can I Have Effective Communication with Others? Please help me welcome Winnie. Hello, Toastmaster. Welcome, guys. I would like to ask you a question. How do you feel when you speak with someone whose second language is English? Do you feel ridiculous, curious, confused, or don't understand at all. English is my second language. 
sometimes I will make other people feel confused or laugh. Sometimes I will feel upset, depressed, even mad at myself. How can I become an effective communicator in English? Today, this I will talk about this, and I will talk about how I plan become an effective communicator in English, and how I plan uh, overcome my English obstacles. I did the communication style quiz. It said my style was a supportive. I thought it for my Chinese. In English, I feel unsure. I will give you some my English obstacles. The first example is listening problem. One day, I went to a restaurant to order some meals. After I finished my order, a waiter told me a lot in a very, very short time. What's new? What did he say? What did he want me to do? Thousands of thoughts were flying in my hand. I'm confused. Sometimes when I talk with other people, I can't understand. This is my first problem, listening obstacles. The second is grandma. One day I talked with Chanel. I said, today my husband, she is going to work. I saw many question marks on her face. She asked me if she or he, oh, sorry, he, 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 always say wrong, he and she. I also have verb tense problem, past tense, present tense, future tense. When I see something, I will say, I go to school. No, no, no. I went to school? No. Have you been? Had you been? Oh my gosh, which one is correct? In Chinese language, we don't have verb tense, singular, plural, the third person. That's why when I say these things, I always mix them up. This is my second problem, grandma obstacles. The second, the third one is pronunciation. I need to talk with doctors, uh, nurse, Sometimes they will ask, what's your son's birthday? December 4th. First? No, no, no. One, two, three, four. Fourth. Sorry, I couldn't understand you. First and fir first. Which one? See, this is my biggest problem. Pronunciation obstacles. At this moment, I feel really, really, really upset at myself. How can I become an effective communicator in English? Who knows the answer? The answer is join in Toastmaster. The first reason is by giving speeches and a working pathway. It can help my pronunciation and speaking. And I'm more understand to use my tone and body language to engage with audience. Also, after giving my speeches, evaluator can give me feedback. It also can improve my public speaking skills. The second reason is I have mentors in Toastmaster. They are helping me how to become an effective communicator in English. We read books, articles. We practice pronunciation. We discuss about the culture, language, people mindset and fund management. See, this really helps. The third strategy is I learn by myself. I'm learning about uh, grandma. I listen a lot of English videos. I take some classes in city college. This is my third strategy to improve my English skills. In summary, by participating in Toastmaster, communicate, communicating with my mentors and self-learning, I believe I will have an effective way 
to communication with others and become a supportive communicator in English. Fellow to semester. Winnie, great job. Good job on your speech. You, I'm just so impressed with how well you're doing. Thank you. As a person who's, I also speak another language, but an easy, much, much, much easier language Spanish than, than the language you come from or the language you're learning. So I sympathize with you. Thank you. I have tie down for a speech today. Are we still doing that? Um, yeah, I was Great. planning. Hi, Ty. Hi. <clears throat> so now I'm going to introduce Ty Martinez. Give me, is this your first speech, Ty? It is, it is. Excellent. So I give you Ty Martinez, you're on. Oh, thank you. Um, when I first uh, found out that my speech was called Icebreaker, <clears throat> I became very nervous because speaking in these types of settings makes me very nervous. Settings that are very structured um, and very, <clears throat> um, well, structured environments. And I've always had this problem where I'd get very, you know, <clears throat> I would get experienced anxiety and start to stutter and, you know, these types of things would plague me. But it's kind of funny because this does not happen in any other aspect of my life. Let me explain. Since I was young, I've always been able to connect with people. My family would tell me that anytime we went somewhere, if we went to a restaurant, I was friends with the waitress by the time we left. Or if we went anywhere, I was always able to meet people and talk to people freely. And this is still very true today. For example, I, in my area where I live, I frequent all of the businesses like the gas station, and I am on a first name basis with the cashier at the gas station. I, I know him very well. I know that he likes the Washington football team, that he has kids and they play soccer. Um, I go to the Starbucks near my house and depending on which way, there's a couple of them and I will go to the drive-through and I know that the cashier is working her way through college. She goes, she wants to work in social work after work. And, you know, being friendly with people at Starbucks has benefits. I've gotten a few free coffees here and there, which is really nice, but um, the other Starbucks in Fig Garden is, because I live near this area, is where I frequent. And I know that the cashier there is a veteran with two children and is also working her way through college. Also, I go to Chipotle at Fig Garden quite a bit. They might know me there because I'm there all the time, but I do have made connections with them. You know, they know that I don't like that much sour cream on my burrito. Um, they know that I always order tea. I don't drink soda. And I go in there and I crack jokes. And it's always a friendly reunion when I go to these places. You know, it's almost like I have a friend there that works there. And I do this because I care about people. And it's a very natural thing for me to speak and to be open. Um, this last week, I was at, or Saturday, I should say, I was at Out of the Barrel, which is a tap house in Fig Garden. I was visiting with friends. Um, they hadn't seen in a while. Some were college colleague or some were college buddies and some were colleagues that I used to work with. And, you know, I can tell you right now that we were probably having more fun on that patio than anybody there. Um, very open and uh, cracking jokes. We were laughing and it was just a really great time. And I'm a very loud person. I'm a very open person. So if I am somewhere and you are near me, you will hear me. And uh, there's a good chance that we might involve you in our conversation. I've uh, brought, been at places and been able to bring tables together and had really great times that way. This is different in my professional life. So I've been working in market research for since 2007. Um, and I have, well, that's quite a bit, 13 years of experience. And I've been able to work with some of the biggest companies in the world, such as eBay, PayPal, Indeed, these types of products and working on projects for qualitative and quantitative projects with these companies. And the one thing that I've noticed is I just am not as outgoing and outspoken as I probably should be. These, I've missed out on certain opportunities where I could have spoken on panels and 
you know, I become really reluctant to volunteer for those things because I feel like I am not as open in these areas when I have a wealth of knowledge to share. And that is why I joined Toastmasters. And that is why I'm here. I want to become a more skilled speaker. I want to be more confident in the structure and how I deliver information. And I want to be able to make those same connections. I mean, I do have a lot of connections in the industry and it is fun and I do have friendships, but I do miss out on some of those bigger things that I felt like I could have been rewarded with and, you know, would have been really rewarding. And again, that is why I'm here today. And I'm really excited about being a part of this group. I've seen a lot of the speeches that you've given. They've been very impressive and I'm inspired by them because I want to learn to speak as eloquently as all of you. And, you know, it's one thing that I've noticed is everyone here is courageous in these speeches and, and um, I want to be that as well. So I want to thank you for having me today and I look forward to growing and learning with all of you. Hi, thank you for jumping in feet first or head first, whichever is braver for you. I can completely relate to you because I came to Toastmasters for similar reason, uh, having a commitment coming up for being president of a club and I was I no good at speaking at all. Toastmasters is the right place to be because this is where we practice. Fantastic, so glad that you're with us. Thank you. And now I'm gonna introduce our most famous table topics master, Sarah Dawson. Hi, welcome everyone. Uh oh, she's muted. How about now? <laughs> Am good. I back? You're good. Okay. I am very glad to be able to do Toastmaster or Toastmaster, whatever I'm doing. <laughs> table topics. How about table topics? I'm very glad to be doing table topics. I love ask, asking good questions. I went, I picked, so we're going to do it a little bit differently than normal. So today I picked one question and I just put it in the, in the chat box right now, where if you want to stay in your comfort zone and just be able to think about the question a little bit before you answer it, you can do that. Or you can choose to have fun. And uh, well, I think it's going to be fun. And you can pick the adventurous side. Whoever would like to go first, let me know if you'd like to answer the question or go on an adventure. Oh, table topics. The, Krista, if you're not familiar with it, table topics is a time that anybody gets to participate, including non-members. And it's a time where you get to practice speaking on the fly without a whole lot of preparation. What Ty and Winnie just did was the practice speeches where you prepare ahead of time. And this is this, the time where we just get to speak on the fly. So would anybody like to start first? Sarah, even though you put it in the chat, would you go ahead and read the question? Absolutely. The question is, tell about a time you were told to get over it. What were you thinking or feeling when they said this? So tell about a time when you were told to get over it. Anybody? No, Sarah, I really wanna go on that adventure, so. All right, Heather, all right. So you have three seconds to pick a partner. Farron. All right, Farron, you're ready to go on an adventure with her. <laughs> and go. you have two seconds to pick A or B. B. B, all right, you're gonna be the investigator and Farron is gonna be the person under investigation. <laughs> Farron, I'm gonna talk to you first. Uh, I'm gonna give you a scenario and you're gonna have 15 seconds to read that scenario before the interrogation begins. And the only thing is you must give a response. Okay, so whatever questions she asks, you have to give a response. Heather, you're gonna be the investigator. You're gonna have two minutes to solve this crime, whatever it happens to be. And at the end of the two minutes, we're gonna ask you what crime it is you think that she committed. <laughs> okay. Do you guys have any questions about this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so just ask right. any questions or do you have questions lined up nope you're gonna have to ask questions to get down to the bottom of what crime she committed okay and Farron I am sending you your scenario now okay. so you know what it is there you go and you have 15 seconds so think it over <laughs> Oh, 
And five seconds to begin, Heather. When you're ready, you can start asking questions. Three, two, one, go. Is this something that uh, you'd have to spend a night in jail for if you did? If you got caught, could you get let go? No, I, I would definitely be relinquished. <laughs> okay. Uh, did somebody or something die? No. Okay. Uh, let's see. Did you kidnap a child? No. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so bad at this. It's okay. I am too. <laughs> I'm sorry. I always thought I would, could be a good investigator growing up, but apparently not. Um, uh, is this something that uh, you would be really embarrassed about? Yes. Most definitely be flabbergasted. Uh, let's see. Is this something you did by yourself or did you have someone do it with you? It's only me. It's only you? Uh, did you go streaking? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> you have 30 seconds left. <laughs> go, Heather, go. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, let's see. You'd spend time in jail. You'd get arrested. You didn't go streaking. You had your clothes on. Uh, let's see. Dogs. Um, what, Joey? Dogs. Dogs. Were, were animals involved? <laughs> No. <laughs> you didn't, you're, you're not an animal kidnapper, thief. Okay. Um, you didn't rob a bank? No. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm doing right. too, Sarah. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, Heather, tell us what the challenging part about this was for you. And then, Farron, we're going to come to you. It just was so open-ended. It could have been anything. And... Anytime I'm on the spot, my mind goes blank. <laughs> so true. Oh, I totally feel that. And Farron, what was challenging is it about this for you? Or, that or wasn't fun? an actual crime. It's just like a, <laughs> a flaw. <laughs> mm. Can I read what it is? Yes, absolutely. Oh, Are wait, wait, Heather, did you want to guess? <laughs> oh, gosh, I tried. I have no idea what it is. Okay, so the thing is, I know a lot of words, but I don't always use them appropriately. When I give my response, I have to use the wrong words and say them with confidence. Mm. And I have a hard time thinking of words that I could misuse. Oh my gosh, that's so beyond sad. confusing. Yeah. Relinquish. Relinquish was the, the key word. That was love, and then I think I used flabbergasted. And... Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Very nice. So well, thank I you, Sarah, it. for taking this one that. So for you two, having no clue what either of this is about, I think you did an awesome job being able to just roll with the punches and hang in there. So awesome job. And so I do have several more scenarios if anybody wants to attempt it and you can, you can go or you can go with the question of the day is tell me about a time you were told to get over it and what were you thinking or feeling at the time? Denise, do you want to go on an adventure? <laughs> no, no. Oh, I totally pictured you as doing this, and Chanel was the only person. That well, I you know what? Doing. I do have investigative background, so you know what? Since I don't want to do it, let's do it, Sarah. Let's Hi. do it. Nice. All right, pick your partner, and then pick if you want to go be the investigator or under investigation. Uh, Taylor. <laughs> oh man. Okay. <laughs> <sighs> and uh, a. Uh, okay. So you're. Right, gonna... Is that what I do? Oh, are you, you want to be under investigation or you want to be the investigator? Oh, I'll be the investigator. Okay, yeah. Okay. All right. So then, <laughs> Taylor, I'm going to send you your scenario. Okay. And you have 15 seconds. Oh, wait. There you go. Now I'll start it. Go ahead. Shh, don't say it out loud. <laughs> uh. <laughs> All right, and ready, set, go ahead, Denise. <laughs> Taylor, what were you thinking when this happened? So like, um, I was thinking this is like really weird. And what would your mom think? Uh, she 
Hmm. I try to be okay with it. Okay. Did this happen during work? Hmm. I think uh, it happened while I was walking my dog. So would it be the evening time? Yeah. And who saw you do it? Um, another woman walking her dog. So did you let your dog poop on someone's lawn and got arrested <laughs> for it? <laughs> Is that, did I solve it? Yeah, that, that was what I was thinking. I don't know if that was the point, Sarah. Oh, <laughs> <What>? <laughs> not quite, but maybe I didn't explain okay. that. <laughs> All right. So okay, she got explain. what you were thinking. Go ahead. Go ahead and read what I had wrote. Um, so it, the crime was you have been using too many crutch words. Use as many crutch words as you can when giving your response. <laughs> but I created the own, <laughs> my own scenario and just gave a lot of crutch words while I was doing it. You're a rat, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is hard. <laughs> yeah, this is like, hard. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I wasn't sure how it would go. I thought it would be fun to try. But yeah. Would anybody like to answer the, the given question or does anybody else want to try and do the investigation? Either one is totally great. So it's tell about a time where you told to get over it and what were you thinking or feeling at the time? Or you can pick another scenario and see how, see how you do. <laughs> Brent, do you want to give one, some, something a try? Oh, well, um, I'll go to the avenue of uh, when somebody told me to get over it and what I was All thinking. Right. <laughs> so I remember in college at Iowa State, I wrote for the um, College Agriculture's magazine, and we were wanting to establish greater subscriptions from alumni and trying to get that alumni list from administrators proved to be much harder than I thought. And when talking to one of the deans and re requesting the uh, list of alumni, he said, there's no way uh, we're going to give out personal information like that. You need to move on and get over it. And it struck me out of left field. It was not, uh, not very happy at the time with it. Um, and, uh, he could see I was visible, visibly upset, but then uh, we talked it through. The nice thing about it uh, was that he uh, understood that I was visibly shaken. And after talking it through, we come to a to a uh, cross uh, a point that uh, we we agreed to disagree, but uh, we still remain in contact while I was at college there. So overall, it worked out very well. I'm so glad you guys were able to talk about it. I know there's definitely several situations where things get misunderstood and it never gets talked about and then just bitterness grows. So I'm glad you guys are able to still get along. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing, Brent. <clears throat> who else who has not gone yet would like an opportunity? I know Denny and Storm, you haven't. I will, uh, to I will yep. take a shot at the, what, what were you uh, thinking? Oh, Question? yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, when I was in high school, it was the night before Sadie Hawkins. I was really excited to go because I had been asked. So that was a, a win right there. Um, I was riding my bike from a friend's house and I was riding really, really fast. And I hit a pothole and I went face first into the street. Um, when I got up, the whole right side, left side of my face was, I had road rash. And then when I woke up in the morning, my, this side of my face was almost, my eye was completely swollen shut. And um, I mean, it looked like I'd been in a car accident, which I basically had been, but on a bike. I went to school the next day and uh, saw my date and she was like, what happened? And I was like, well, I can't go obviously. And uh, she was like, no, you have to go because she had bought, spent money on shirts. And she's like, I was like completely embarrassed. I looked like I had been in a major accident. And she says, you know, just get over it, just go. 
So I go to this event, which didn't turn out that bad, but we did take pictures and you could see the left side of my face was swollen in the pictures. We got them, not a big deal. So that winter formal, I went to, to the winter formal and the company that took the pictures had blown that picture up probably about <laughs> eight size size than we, I mean, it was this huge poster that was on the wall that they were using for advertisement. And I just, it was probably the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to me. Um, so when she said, get over it, I felt confident, but it backfired. Yeah. Oh, oh man. Oh. That was not the, the ex ending I was expecting. I thought, oh, yay. And then you had courage and. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it was a, uh, it was quite humiliating, actually. It was almost like a Carrie movie, watching the Carrie movie. <laughs> it <was. laughs> yeah, it was terrible. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Ty, for answering. Ty, Brent, thank you guys for answering questions. And the other four of you who went on an adventure and tried something new, thank you for giving it a shot. It was awesome. And I'm going to turn it back over to, I believe, the general evaluator, correct? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sarah. Interesting. I like that. I like the little different nuances of table topics that can go in any direction. We can be very creative with it. We can be very straight, direct to the point. So I love that, Sarah. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for everybody for jumping on board, especially Denise. I like that when you say, I didn't want to do it, but I probably should. Love it. With that, I want to, so I'm looking at a different I think a earlier model of our agenda. So for Winnie, her evaluator, is that Denise? You're muted. You're muted. Are you, are you doing Winnie's speech, Denise? No, you know what? I have myself down as evaluating Ty's speech. So I evaluated Ty's. Okay. So who's doing Winnie? Is that you, Denny? I, I actually, uh, it was new to me that Winnie was doing the speech today, but I will be happy to evaluate her speech. Okay. Yes. That's our Real. So, master evaluator, Denny. Winnie, you did a fantastic job. I love that you were standing. Your hand movements were perfect. I think you had your camera up a little bit higher, which was, which was a good angle. You're, English is coming along so well. I'm glad you're getting some coaching because that's always fun and helpful. But it's also very obvious that you're working hard at it and putting a lot of intention into your pronunciation and spacing your words out, saying your sounds clearly. I loved the whole message. You're, you're just sort of putting yourself out there of how difficult it is. And at the same time, you're showing us how you approach a challenge. And you're a tough girl, that's all I can say. I really, really enjoyed your speech and I look forward to more speeches about all different kinds of things. You have such an interesting life and so many things to share with us in English, which is so wonderful. I think all of us, there, there's still a, a couple of words that, that as you, as you develop, your language skills will become easier to say. And so I, I encourage you to just keep going with it. I know you will because you're very determined. That comes across right away in your speech. And thank you for sharing that with us, for, for hanging in there with our club. We look forward to you being a super member of our club, a great example to all of us of determination. Thanks, Winnie. Thank you, Denny. Thank you, Denny. And thank you, Winnie. Let me remove our pins here. I'm trying something a little different where we get both in the same pane. Let me do this before I call up Denise. Okay. Thank you, Denny. And then for our next speech, Ty speech, Denise did his evaluation. So Denise. Thank you, Joey. Ty, immediately. The first thing I noticed is that you were standing up, which was great. It's what you're supposed to do, but it isn't that easy with this um, format in Zoom. 
And so I picked up on that right away because um, as your, for your first uh, speech, that was really great. The second thing I noticed is that, and that's something too, that is hard to uh, evaluate with Zoom because we can always turn up our volume to make someone a little bit louder, which isn't something we would do meeting in person. But I thought that you spoke very clearly and um, projected loudly, which is great. The thing that registered the most for me personally was you're talking about being anxious in a professional setting, but very social in an outside setting. And I think for a lot of people who come to Toastmasters, that is them as well. I 100% related to you. It is the reason that I came to Toastmasters because of freezing up in a professional situation. So I don't know if you could possibly know that about your audience, but that's something that you're supposed to do is kind of gauge your audience that you're speaking to. And so you nailed that, whether it was intentional or not. I thought you were really comfortable considering the start of your speech had some nerves, of course. I still get nerves and I've been here for years, but you really, it kind of, as you progressed, those, those went away. So I thought that was really great. And you just kept us engaged because you were vulnerable and it was something personable that personal you talked about. And I think everybody really is drawn to that when they meet somebody. And it's always great at Toastmasters to get to know somebody on that level. So I look forward to more speeches from you. And I think you did a fantastic job. Thank you. Great. I appreciate that. Thank you, Denise. It sounds like I need to take you to a concert, though, because uh, with that personality and my <laughs> stalking skills, <laughs> we can have a good time. <laughs> I think so. I think so. Maybe a ball I game. Stalking? I didn't mean right. to say stalking. <laughs> Maybe a ball game. You had a Mark McGuire story that you're I'm sure going to tell at some point yeah be careful you don't know what you're getting yourself into there <laughs> yeah <laughs> cool thanks Denise all right the rest of our team I'm going to call them up I'm going to give a chance a couple more chances to use our word of the day so I'm going to call up Taylor Frederick first to give her off counter report all right so the crutch word of the day was so. I've noticed that it's really hard to not use that word. Joey, you had a so. Heather, you had a so and a. Uh. Winnie, you did really well in your speech. I only caught one a. Uh. That was really great. Ty, there were a few uhs and ums in the beginning of the speech. And then I think you really got more comfortable in the second half of it. Brent, I got an uh, and Denise, I got a so and um, which are all, all really hard not to use, but good job, everyone. Thank you, Taylor. All right, Miss Farron, you have our timer report. Yes, I do. And I'm quite proud that I was able to time everything, even with the little puppy wistfully looking up at me, wanting to <laughs> in my lap. <laughs> so in there. Our speeches were perfect. Winnie, you came in at 5.30 and Ty at 5.02. That was really great timing on both of those. Table topics, I did not time the uh, two person one because I think that's just a little bit different. But Brent, you came in at 1.18, perfect. And Ty, 1.35. Evaluations, Denny, just a tiny bit short at 143, but it's awesome that you stepped up and did that without knowing you were supposed to be evaluating. And Denise, perfect at 218. Good job, you guys. Thank you, Farron. Yeah, very nice, Denny, being able to pick that up without knowing. I almost picked it up and then you jumped in there. And our last but not least on our list was Heather Davis. How do we do on our grammarian and word of the day? So I, I really did uh, pay attention to the speeches and everything, but I only caught you, Joey, and Farron. Was there anyone that did say it that I just, I missed? Oh, okay, well then we just had those two, so <laughs> not too bad. <laughs> 
the words of the days are always fun. And if we don't use them, we don't. But hopefully next time we can do a little bit more. Awesome. Thank you, Heather. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good word. All right. General eval of the meeting. I think it went well with our, both our speakers. Ty, we got to learn a lot more about you. And I, I agree with Denise that we got to see that almost Wizard of Oz beginning in black and white and then the color part, except it was almost in reverse, whereas the color when you're social and then it's the black and white when you're at work. And so I love how you're joining Toastmasters to help you out on the on the black and white side. And then for those of you, Winnie, I'm one, I'm one of her mentors, one of her many. And one of the things I've tried to challenge her on is to do her speech with notes, not so much writing it out and memorizing it. And I, I think she did a great job with that. You could tell better flow with it because when I meet with her and she goes, I don't know if I can do it. I don't know if I can just see notes and do it. I said, hey, how are you doing it? How are you speaking to me as we're talking right now? She's not using notes to answer my questions. So I said, try it. And I think she did a great job. So Winnie, way to go, way to go. And of course, both our evaluators, great evaluations today, De Denise and Denny, the two uh, Denises, way to go and great examples for everybody else on evaluation and great table topics, Sarah, and the people that got into the table topics and took the challenge and the adventure and shared. So thank you very much. I think we did great today and we'll end on time, thankfully, because I'm not the president anymore and I tend to talk way too much. So I will send it over to Farron. Thank you, Joey. I agree. We had an awesome meeting and really fun table topics there. That was really, really challenging, but I like it. I think we could get used to doing more game style things like that. It's really cool. I, I, have, I, didn't, I, have I didn't mean to, more. I didn't mean to call you a rat, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I did want to share just something on the topic of the day of get over it. It was something that I saw posted on Instagram. And it said, if you have $86,400 in the bank and someone takes $10, are you really gonna throw away the other 85,380? Did I do the math right? Something like that. No, you're not gonna throw that out of your account. So if somebody ruins 10 seconds of your day, you're not gonna throw away the whole day. You should just get over it. I think that was and let's see, Denise's birthday is March 27th. We're not going to sing to her. Are there any other March birthdays? No? All right. Well, we will give virtual stickers to our speakers, Ty and Winnie. Great job on your speeches today. And a virtual sticker also to Sarah for the awesome table topics. And as well as Joey for doing double duty today. Thanks for that. And you know what, a virtual sticker to Denny as well for jumping in on that evaluation. <laughs> surprise. <laughs> yes, surprise. We did a great job today, you guys. And let's fill in next week's agenda. It will be the day before St. Patrick's Day. So that's the theme for the day. Do we have a Toastmaster? Denise, did I see that? Little hand? Yes. <laughs> All right. And then Joey is speaking. Does anyone else want to give a planned speech that day? Okay, that's fine. Who would like to evaluate Joey's speech? Sarah? Thank you. And a table topics master. I can do that. Brent. Brent? Thank you. General evaluator? Taylor? Yeah. Awesome. Grammarian? Where's Storm at? <laughs> He's here, but not here. Yeah. I can do Grammarian. I'll counter? I'm here. There he is. Hi, guys. Storm, would you like to be I'll counter or a timer sure. next week? Yes. Yeah. Yes, um, here, let me check my uh, schedule for timer, just a second. Yes, I could be timer for next week. Okay. Do we have an awe counter for next week? Winnie? Winnie? Yeah. And would anyone like to try Zoom Master? Mm. Hi. Now we know he's a data research tech guy. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I can do that, I think. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll send you, we got a little SOP for you that we can send you that'll help. 
okay. only thing that I changed today was trying to pin two at the same time when we when they were doing the either the table topics or the evaluation. That might be something we'll all have to add into that thing. Okay. Awesome. And then on March 23rd, I have speakers, myself, Heather, and Denny. Are we still all good for that? Okay. And then March 30th, I have no speakers yet. Would anyone like to get on the schedule? Start planning that out? Sure. I'll go. Hello. Hi. And hi. Sure. Perfect. Okay. And I would like to ask for comments or questions from our guest, Krista. Sorry to put you on the spot there, but just what did you think of our meeting? And I like this meeting. Um, it, it wasn't a lot different than the first Toastmasters meeting that I had gone to in terms of, I guess, like the agenda and the schedule and how you, you, you know, you keep to um, an agenda. The, I had, um, their word of the day was a little bit easier because it, it was the word love and we did it just before Valentine's Day. Okay. <laughs> so, so it's a little easier to work in. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I did enjoy this meeting. Um, everyone, you guys seem really helpful and really like want to help each other. And I, I, I kind of, uh, you know, agree with Ty. I could, when I, when it's more of a structured, even like now I'm like trying to grapple with it, like, struggling with how I'm going to explain myself. It's my nerves, you know, start acting up, but when I'm in a social setting, it's a whole lot different. But being a part of this meeting today, it, I, just, I don't know. I just kind of felt like the love and encouragement in the room or, via zoom <laughs> mm -hmm. and i i like that that you know everyone is you know encouraging and and supportive of, of one another and that i think helps kind of tamp your nerves down and let you get through it without feeling i guess like you're being judged or going to be you know critiqued in a bad way so i i enjoyed it i do have a couple of questions though mm -hmm. as far as the the speeches um the time or the five to seven minute speeches who comes up with the topics are there specific topics or is the person who's giving the speech able to pick and choose what they want to talk about do you want me to take that Jay? go ahead Mary. <laughs> you can come up with any topic any subject that you want we follow a curriculum called pathways there are 11 different pathways in toastmasters and you log in, it gives you basically your goal for that speech. So for your icebreaker, it's just to get up there and give a speech about yourself, any aspect of yourself. And then the rest of the speeches give you some sort of guideline as in um, trying to use your body language a specific way or working on your vocal variety. Each one has a different goal and you can come up with pretty much whatever you wanna talk about. Oh, okay, I didn't, I didn't know that. <laughs> So when, when you're a member of Toastmasters, you have an option. I mean, you can view these pathways. Yes, yeah. you are assigned a pathway. Your first one is free. If you want to do two pathways, the second one is $20. So it's really an expensive way to learn okay. awesome about public speaking. Yeah, it's very helpful. Oh, that, that's, <laughs> that's amazing because I, I was listening to these speeches and I was thinking, wow, these people, they did a really good job of just coming up like off the top of their head what they wanted to talk about. <laughs> So no, that that's great. Um, yeah, reach out and, anytime, Krista, if you have more questions, and I can send you some examples and um, just some speeches maybe in the past, like some just some titles and. Okay, yeah. thank you. I appreciate no that. My my last question, um, and it, it's again ar around a speech, or is more like table topics. Is that something that's also decided in advance or does, or the, or should say the um, person who's in charge of table talk, topics, do they have leeway to choose what that section is? Sarah, yeah. you wanna answer that? Go ahead, Sarah. Yes, as table topics master, you can pick whatever you want and be as creative as you want and ask, yeah, whatever. Some, a, a lot of times we try and tie it into the theme of the day, but it doesn't have to be necessarily. So, yeah. Oh, it's, okay. Well, Sarah, I think you did a really good job doing, having the option to choose either about the, you know, a time when someone told you to get over it or doing more of the adventure, as you called it. 
I like that. <laughs> that wasn't done in the other Toastmasters that I meeting that I had joined in. So I wasn't sure like, you know, how much leeway do you have to, to, uh, for, for that particular segment. Yeah. Complete freedom. So just was, get people talking, just sitting, people <laughs> talking on the fly is pretty much the only requirement as far as I know. So yeah, <laughs> that, that was, that was really fun. And I, I do want to say thank you to everyone for welcoming me and letting me, you know, participate or at least watch this yeah. Your meeting, it was really fun, and I enjoyed myself. Yeah. Thanks for Glad sharing. you made Krista. it, Krista. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Come back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Postmasters.org will answer a lot of your questions. Oh, thank you for that. Thank you. <laughs> Sweet. Well, thank you everybody for joining today. We'll see you guys next week on Tuesday. Sending out an email about the speech contest in case anyone wants to come to that. That's awesome. Everybody have a good week. Bye. Bye. <laughs>